my pleasure this morning to be sharing with you uh, a sneak preview, if you will, of the results from the uh, most recent private capital market survey. Uh, as you're probably well aware, the first survey was administered in March and April of uh, 2009, and we published a report in July, and uh, this batch of results is coming from survey results were uh, administered in uh, October, November. And so what we're gonna do is take a, a high level view of the findings that we have from this, uh, uh, this particular survey, and uh, we're going to walk through the various capital market segments. So this survey itself, it's a web-based survey, and uh, we've pulled banks, asset-based lenders, mezzanine funds, private equity groups, venture capital, and for the first time in this survey, we also pulled private business owners to get a feel for what they think about uh, their fundraising opportunities and uh, what their views are on cost of capital and uh, things that are related to it. So just to start off, uh, one of the overarching goals of this project is to understand what various capital providers are expecting on their investments, that is new investment. And so this curve identifies what the expected returns are by capital type uh, for, the, uh, for the most recent survey uh, based upon the last quarter of uh, 2009. So what we see is that uh, on average banks are charging about 6.8%, asset-based lenders about 13 mezzanine funds uh, increase slightly from 18 to 18 and a half, private equity groups are expecting about 25%, and uh, venture capital uh, firms are expecting about 38%, which is a, a decline from the 42 that we found on a prior survey. Naturally, within each of these components, there does exist some variability. Uh, so if one is a larger entity within this uh, segment, uh, you may have a higher or lower rate depending on, uh, uh, on your uh, uh, status and, and uh, industry specializations. So what we're gonna do is kind of hover around the various capital market segments here uh, in, in accordance with uh, the private capital market yield line. So starting off with banks, what are some of the trends that uh, we found in this most recent survey? Well, to no surprise, uh, a tough credit market uh, lingers here. Uh, banks are reporting fewer applications and the time to process loans has actually increased. And this is something that uh, was interesting based upon an early discussion that I had with the panel over here about uh, the time to process applications increasing. And uh, basically, it was told to me that uh, bankers now are spending more time in the due diligence before they pretty much posted through transactions. And now they have to really do a little bit of uh, additional questioning, ask the hard questions, and uh, do more investigation in order to, uh, to get the deals done and make sure that they're controlling for as much risk as they can. 82% report reductions in credit quality of borrowers. And naturally, that's reflected in the decline rates that we see. These decline rates are pretty significant and range from about 60 to 67% on average uh, for loan applications, depending on the type of loan uh, that, uh, uh, that one is applying for. The major reasons for the decline loans, uh, quality and cash flow uh, emerges as number one reason, followed by uh, collateral sufficiency. Okay. The uh, smaller loan sizes are coming as a result of contracted uh, cash flow multiples and also uh, reduced standard advance rates. Furthermore, on a broader level, the industry is still having some challenges. Delinquency and charge off ratios were reported to be still increasing uh, as of the, the survey time period. Furthermore, uh, when we ask a question about uh, what their competitors are doing, 80% report that their competitors are making fewer loans. In terms of motivations for loans, uh, the highest concentration uh, comes from pre-financings. So um, borrowers are still attempting to uh, reduce their cost of capital to the extent that they can to uh, position for their next opportunities for growth. Acquisitions came in second, followed by uh, growth capital, uh, accounting for approximately 10%. Some of the important factors cited uh, when lending, and uh, this is uh, from the senior lenders themselves, uh, collateral emerges is that one factor with the highest concentration. And this about doubled from our first survey period, uh, from seven to about uh, 15%. Liquidity is also extremely important, followed by debt to cash flow and fixed charge coverage ratios. In terms of the, the latter two ratios I mentioned, uh, some of the important benchmarks include uh, medians that are reported, 
for uh, funded or senior debt to EBITDA of about uh, three times and a total debt of about three and a half uh, reported on median. Some go higher, some go, go less than that. Next, we turn to asset-based lenders. And uh, these lenders are uh, making loans based upon collateral that's being pledged uh, for the uh, credit. And to a large degree, they're highly correlated to, uh, to, to the banking sector. Uh, they're also facing a restrictive credit environment. Most report increases in loan applications However, about 7 of 10 uh, report lower percentage of borrowers who are actually approved for credit. And again, taking a look at the, the decline percentages, these numbers are uh, quite high, once again, ranging from about 69% to about 75% of loan applications that are crossing uh, desks. Again, industry concerns uh, follow on. Uh, delinquency rates are higher, charge-off rates are higher. And once again, uh, the number of loans being made by competitor banks uh, are reported to have declined as well. Some of the major reasons for declined loans include uh, sufficiency of collateral and uh, in debt ratios. A little more on ADLs. Uh, similar to banks, uh, the largest concentration in terms of motivation is refinancings, which accounted for about 44%, uh, uh, growth capital about 20%, acquisitions at about 10%. Uh, Advanced rates uh, vary by collateral type, as you might suspect. Some collateral types are easier to value, are more liquid, and uh, uh, are more transactable, and as a result, will have higher advance rates. Those include marketable securities and accounts receivable that uh, have median advance rates of 80% and 85% respectively. Uh, again, there's some variability that exists about these, uh, about these mediums. Something that's really interesting in asset-based lending is that uh, the smaller the borrower, presumably the smaller the loan, uh, the much greater the rate that uh, can be charged here. So on the small end of the scale, for those seeking loans of under a million dollars, uh, the median rate reported on an all-in basis is about 17.5%. That includes the rate plus fees. And as the loan becomes larger, uh, getting up into the $10 million range, uh, we're looking at about 7% uh, of the median uh, ranging with a high concentration between 5 and, and 12%. Okay, next let's move to uh, mezzanine funds. And I should also uh, uh, tell you that uh, these slides are going to be posted on the Private Capital Markets website. So if you wish to go there to review the slides to follow a lot of the details, uh, please do so. Um, they should uh, be up within a couple of days here. For mezzanine funds, uh, what we're seeing here are some signs of growth but still a general risk aversion is taking place. Uh, nearly 80% are reporting increases in the number of business plans that they're receiving, and they're also reporting a slight net increase in the number of investments that they're making. Uh, over half of respondents are reporting growth in the size of the industry, okay? and mezzanine funds typically are the beneficiary of the cutbacks that are uh, uh, coming from the asset-based funders and, and banks. So uh, they've been pretty fortunate through this downturn to uh, see increased deal flow. 48% report an increase in the warrant coverage, which is uh, their equity participation on the deals, and uh, that's a sign of having the increased demand. Uh, they're generally still averse to risk. Uh, over half report a decrease in their cash flow multiples. 56% indicate a decreased appetite for risk overall. Uh, almost half report an increase in their interest rate spreads and uh, financial covenants are becoming tighter on average in their, their deals. Motivation, still refinancing, is uh, at the top of the list. For uh, MES loans, uh, this accounts for about three of 10, followed by management buyouts and, uh, and growth capital. A little more on uh, MES, a typical firm will invest up to four times EBITDA, okay? and this represents a little bit of an increase from last time that we had surveyed, uh, where it was about uh, 3.75. Uh, within this uh, four uh, times ratio, about two and a half uh, is the reported median for, uh, for senior debt. Minimum fixed charge coverage ratios have declined slightly from about 1.2 to 1.1 uh, on the median. Again, some will go below and some above that. In terms of pricing, the median coupon rate increased from about 13 to 14 percent, and about 58 uh, percent of deals have a payment in, in kind provision. And this payment in kind provision, on average, represents about 20% of the total uh, coupon stated interest rate. 
about two thirds of deals have warrants, and these warrants represent about 48% of diluted ownership interest. Um, the uh, median there is about 5%, and in exchange for these warrants, mezzanine funds are expecting a return of about 8% on average. Okay? Uh, looking forward, where are the industries in which they're looking to deploy capital? Uh, service and manufacturing, the two primary spots identified over the next 12 months. Okay, moving on to private equity. Okay, private equity funds are having a challenging investing environment. Um, the majority are reporting a decline in leverage multiples, deal multiples, which is making it tougher to get deals done. For the portfolio companies that they have, they're finding that the time to exit is uh, lengthened. And furthermore, uh, on an expectation basis, they're expecting that uh, the time until exit on new investments is going to be uh, larger. Nearly 70% report a general decline in the industry. As time goes on, there tends to be more of a trend towards taking on minority interests in private equity uh, investments. Nearly 70% of respondents report a willingness to invest in minority interests okay, with the appropriate investor protections, buy sell agreements, employee agreements, board seats, etc. Uh, the median discount from pro rata for taking a minority investment is 20%. It ranges from about 10 to 25 uh, within the middle 50. The deal flow funnel, it's taking more business plans in order to fund one deal in private equity these days. Uh, during our last survey, we, we reported 80 business plans were viewed to fund one deal. Uh, that number's increased to about 100. Naturally, some firms are much more restrictive and review more plans, uh, and, uh, and some are, are less restrictive on that. For the portfolio companies that uh, private equity funds have, their exit plans are such that 43% are reporting plans to sell to a public company. That number has increased from about 35% on last survey. 30% plan to sell to another private equity group. That number's come down a little bit. And only 7% are planning for initial public offering for their portfolio companies. Again, over the next 12 months, the, uh, the two main areas of the economy that they're looking to deploy capital towards includes uh, service and manufacturing. Service is up slightly. Manufacturing is uh, up slightly. And of note, uh, retail has just fallen off the map. Uh, retail that was 4.1% uh, previously is down to about 0.8% uh, in terms of uh, expected funding. Moving on to venture capital. And uh, the venture capital industry has had a really tough time. While the contraction continues into the fourth quarter, 59% are reporting a decline in the percent of plans funded while 66% uh, percent report decreasing percentages of off rounds. That's pretty consistent with what you're hearing. Uh, about six out of 10 report an increase in the time to exit. 73% are reporting a decrease in their general appetite for risk. Uh, many believe their fundraising prospects have declined uh, through this economic downturn. Uh, about nine out of 10 are reporting a contraction in the size of the industry. That's uh, pretty significant. Uh, yet, VCs, by uh, their nature, remain somewhat optimistic. Hope remains. 48% report increases in the number of business plans received, and almost half report an increase in the number of high-quality investment prospects. Okay? About 45% report an increase in the quality of the portfolio over the prior six months, which is pretty encouraging. Uh, venture capital, they review about 100 business plans to close a deal as well. Okay. A little more on VC, and uh, we're seeing a couple trends emerge. One is that in new investments, they're expecting higher multiples on the investment dollars that they deploy. And we've seen this pretty much across the board. Uh, stage one represents those really small investments. These are the ones that have a business plan, perhaps an incomplete management team, no revenues, no expense history uh, to speak of as of, uh, of yet. Stage six, by contrast, is on a complete other end of the spectrum. These companies are large, they have revenues, they have a stable operating history, they have positive cash flows, and uh, they're generally easier to, uh, uh, to trend. And so stage one uh, multiples increase from 8.2 to 9.5 times, sales to total venture investment. Stage six, by contrast, grows from about 3.9 to 5.5. They're also expecting a general longer time to exit on new investments made in the last six months. 
and uh, these investments in, in stage one, for instance, from 6.2 to 7.5 years, a considerable lengthening of uh, the holding period. Stage six actually was slightly less. What this means when you have uh, the increased multiples but the longer time horizon is that uh, you know, something's got to give. And actually we have implied returns that are calculated on their investment as being slightly lower. So overall, in the last survey, we indicated 42%. In this survey, we're looking at about uh, 38 on average. And across the stages, uh, stage one uh, drops from about 40 to about 36. And we see other reductions across the other stages. The exit plans are uh, relatively constant, although there's a slight increase in the percent of companies they plan to sell to a public company. Uh, that number's at about 59, which is an increase from 50%. Uh, IPOs are down uh, from about 12, uh, from about 17% to about 12.4. A little more on VC. Um, California is a target for nearly 36% of investments over the next 12 months. Okay, that's uh, actually fairly constant to what it had been previously. Furthermore, clean technology is the industry with the highest concentration of expected investment for the next 12 months. And it's exhibiting an increase from about 12.3 to 14.5%. And while this happens, we're seeing declines in software, hardware, and biotech investment over the same time period. Okay, so now we turn to the other side of the spectrum. We have the capital providers. Now we're gonna take a look at the private businesses who are demanding capital. And businesses are generally optimistic about their prospects as well, as many of you know who have dealt with uh, any privately held companies. Um, but uh, despite nearly 50% indicating increased competitive pressures, about 64% are reporting the growth opportunities increase relative to six months ago. Nearly 46% report, however, that they have decreased access to funding, okay, which may be vital to their growth opportunities. Businesses report very cost of capital, paybacks, and expected returns. Interestingly, privately held businesses rely on payback primarily as their investment valuation criteria. And so they identify various payback periods for that minimum or maximum amount of time that they consider before they get their initial funding back uh, is being uh, really quite varied. Uh, hiring a salesperson, they play, pay a uh, payback of uh, 1.5 years approximately. Uh, if they're looking to acquire a competitor, they're looking at a maximum of about 3.2 years. And the cost of capital are pretty much in line with these sorts of investment opportunities. Uh, a general investment in a new computer system, they identify their cost of capital as 10%, uh, increasing to 25 for the acquisition of a competitor. Okay. Then they also identify expected returns, but, uh, actually warms my heart to see that they actually are greater than what they perceive their cost of capital to be. That means they should be creating value. Um, so as we look at this um, and look at their, their prospects for funding, we really need to ask the question if they're being realistic about this. About 57% believe that they currently qualify for a bank loan, uh, which given uh, against the backdrop <coughs> of the number of decline applications raises some questions, but Presumably, this, uh, this sample is a little bit biased towards those businesses that believe that they're good businesses. That's what uh, I'm led to believe here. Uh, nearly 47% believe they qualify for a private equity investment, okay? And 41% think that they qualify for venture capital. Realistic, optimistic, delusional, who's to say? Uh, it seems to be pretty aggressive. One of the uh, things that's really interesting is to see how deals are evaluated and how investments are assessed within the private capital markets. In the public markets, we talk about discounted cash flow techniques uh, for hours on end, and uh, that really is the, the driving force. Internal rate of return is also given some credence. But in the private markets, what emerges is this dominance of multiple analysis. Uh, primarily as an investment valuation technique, uh, followed by internal rate of return, which would be the, uh, the next in line, and then market analysis, payback, and then finally, in fifth place, discounted cash flow, which is really quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, furthermore, across the various segments, 
approximately 60% of respondents acknowledge gut feel as being a driving influence on their investment decisions, both from a capital provider perspective and from a private business investment perspective. Looking forward for the next 12 months, um, you know, what do we see in the private capital markets? What are their predictions? Uh, first of all, demand per capital, okay, and I'll just focus on the averages uh, mostly here. Demand per capital is expected to increase across all segments. Okay? Businesses need the capital to continue to grow. Uh, they're really the lifeblood of the economy, uh, given that they're small and have more growth opportunities available to them. Capital restrictiveness uh, actually has improved from last time we surveyed. Capital restrictiveness is about neutral. Uh, the majority indicate that uh, restrictiveness is going to be about the same with approximately equal uh, weights between increase and decrease. Previously, what we saw in the last survey just six months ago is about 50% indicated that capital would become more restrictive. So there tends to be a bit of a thawing uh, going on in the private capital markets. In terms of overall estimates for uh, growth, GDP is expected at 1.2%. Uh, and then we asked an interesting question. What would you expect a private company equivalent to be in terms of GDP? And uh, that number came in at 1.7%. Naturally, we would expect smaller companies on average to uh, have higher growth rates and contribute to the economy in a disproportionate type of uh, fashion. Um, however, I found this a little bit troubling and that uh, the private companies being the growth engine of the economy, in my opinion, perhaps should exhibit more of a spread than what we see here. Uh, business conditions, uh, the vast majority indicate slight improvement. And expected returns to limited partners over the next 12 months, Mesme's reporting about 15%, private equity 20, and venture capital about uh, 12%. Okay. And that provides a real high overview of uh, the survey results. I know we just went through a lot of information in a short period of time, a lot of numbers and data. So again, I'd encourage you to uh, visit the uh, private capital markets website uh, to review the uh, PowerPoint slide. You'll be able to pull a lot of information from that. Furthermore.